The story of a game's journey into legendary status. And you too can become legendary in the new fantasy strategy game from the creators of Rise of Kingdoms, Call of Dragons. Nailed it! Call of Dragons is a new MMO fantasy conquest game that allows you to explore, recruit, battle, and live a fantasy world of possibilities the likes of which we fantasy fans dream of. A world of distinct factions, spring wardens, elves, humans, orcs, everything you need to get your Middle Earth vibe on. Though it's not Middle Earth, it is a different world. But still, getting your fantasy world on. And those are just the playable ones. On top of that, you have a myriad of fantasy races. Celestials, goblins, halflings, giants, and more. Play alongside other players from around the world in PvE or against them in PvP. Train your heroes with unique skills and abilities to turn the tide of battle in an instant. A variety of behemoths are scattered throughout the world. Defeat them in battle, bring them under your command, train them, and release them in battle as your secret weapon. So download Call of Dragons using my link below. Use promo code PLAYCOD now or use the QR code on screen to get yourself some special rewards. And now! Can you get a copyright claim in a YouTube video for giving gas station deli quality? Acapella in a YouTube video? I don't think so, so we move on. So Tetris is directed by John S. Baird, stars Taron Egerton, and it's a biopic. This man's vision quest to bring Tetris from behind the Iron Curtain of the USSR and bring it to the rest of the world and make a little bit of that cheddar cheese. Which isn't the point. Which isn't the point. Which is much better than I thought it was gonna be when I heard, hey, they wanna make a Tetris movie. Point is, I had already seen the movie Pixels, so my mind went to Pixels, I was like, it's gonna be like aliens and, and building blocks are falling and people have to, st oh God. No, it's a biopic about how Tetris went from the USSR to the rest of the world. And yes, this is a biopic, which means based on a true story, which means we don't know where the facts end and the bullshit begins or vice versa. But it is a guy going to the USSR in the 80s during the Cold War. So I imagine there's a story to tell there. For the sake of entertainment, it's a really interesting one. And a fun one, actually. It's, it's more lighthearted than I thought it would be. In fact, at first, for the first 45 minutes or so in this movie, this movie was, it was going forward at a rocket's pace. But it had voiceover, a lot of locations you had to know. It actually uses a fun sprite-based pixel presentation. Reminding me of Scott Pilgrim versus the world to let you know, hey, we're going here now, we're going there now. These are the people you need to know and you see little sprite representations of them. And the gamer in me, it just clicked. I, I remembered those people because of the sprite versions of them. Not the human versions, no. I try to forget humans in my day to day, but sprites, yeah, I'll remember those. And what I liked about this movie is it's, it's a movie about a video game, but it's a video game, let's face it, all of us have played and all of us have been addicted to. We called it being tetricized in the household I grew up in. Right, we were all tetricized. We've all been tetricized. We all love being tetricized because we have the game. We play the game and we love the game to this day. So I always appreciate it where there's a story, a biopic about a certain subject matter, but you don't have to be invested in that subject matter to be invested in the film. You don't have to be a race car nut to enjoy Ford v Ferrari. You don't have to be a video game nut to enjoy Tetris the game and the biopic, because the game truly is accessible to everybody. It's Tetris, man. But for the gamers out there, it is neat to see the history of the video game and how Game Boy was wrapped into this. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna pack Mario with that. And this dude's like, you should pack it with Tetris. All right, let me go to Russia. And that's where this movie really starts. As much as I felt like this movie was throwing a lot of information at me really quickly, for longer than most movies do to give you the setup, it is set up. So when he gets to Russia, it's like, okay, that's actually the setting of the film. And then it turns into a really fascinating business film, also spy thriller. Calling it a spy thriller might feel hyperbolic, but it does have spy thriller elements in here. This movie actually does kind of an amazing job of having its tone be enjoyable. You know, it starts out, you're like, oh, some video game references and some history and lighthearted, enjoyable tone of how Tetris came to the masses. It doesn't necessarily lose that tone, but by the end, you're watching some really intense, nail-biting Cold War KGB shit. It felt like I was watching the arms race of video games. Like when I was watching this movie, I felt like the most important and intense shit to come out of the Cold War was playing out right in front of me. Yeah, you know, Cuban Missile, th that's, no, Tetris. What can I say, I'm a sucker for balance of tone, and I didn't feel the lighthearted, enjoyable tone compromise the intense shit. I never felt like I had slipped into another movie. You know how that happens, where a movie 
has one tone and then it goes into another tone or maybe it throws out comedic tone. You're like, all right, people are clocking on to different movies while they're filming this and it's weird. It all worked in one movie and it always felt like the same movie. But you really feel those elements of spy thriller, that isolation where he's like, all right, I'm in Russia doing business. They're like, great. You could probably call home in about a week. In a country that hates your guts, you are public enemy number one. But yeah, I'm sure that game is great. And I always love it when a movie pulls this off where, I mean, Tetris, was packed with the Game Boy. So obviously there is an element of, well, that happened. So how do you keep the audience on their toes when essentially they know how the story ended up and now we do have Tetris out there, have for decades, but I was still biting my nails. Props to that. But to its core, it is an underdog story. You know, you have this one guy who so wants to make this deal happen, but he's, he's him and he's going up against large billionaire douchebag corporations and the KGB, the Russian government. And there's this one good hearted guy in there who has literally bet the house, his house, that he can get this job done. All in celebration of one of the greatest video games of all time. I also love that. This movie has a reverence and a praise to the game Tetris. And the music in this movie was incredible too. The theme we know is the Tetris theme. You know the one. Yeah, that one, which I guess is a Russian tune or a Russian poem that predates the game Tetris. I just know it as the Tetris theme though, so I'm gonna call it that. That's the theme of the movie. And like any theme in a movie, there are different variations of it. Sometimes you get an intense drum beat that goes along with it. Sometimes it's mixed with 80s music on top of it that amazingly works like it did in the trailer. I will say as much as I enjoyed the video game graphics and the pixelization when they were traveling somewhere, like fast traveling somewhere, Indiana Jones style, but there was a pretty great car chase sequence in this movie. Again, biting my nails during it. But then they did the pixelization, they made the movie look pixelized like we were in a video game and then it switched to overhead view, but actual like Game Boy video game graphics. I never needed that for the car chase. The car chase was pretty amazing by itself. It actually took me out of it when it started looking like a video game. It was one of those situations where less would have been more for that. But in the end, I had a great time with Tetris. It's on Apple TV right now. Yeah, I got Apple TV just to watch this because it's like this. I enjoy me a good biopic. I love me some Tetris and I like me a good trailer. This seemed to have all three. And it did have all three, no regrets. Though I'm still on the free trial of Apple TV. Might cancel that now. I'm a cheap bastard, Zoomy. Which is why it's no small thing when I say Tetris is worth watching and worth buying on Blu-ray. All right, so Tetris, the biopic of how we got it. It's on Apple TV right now. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.